This is my 1000 watt ZVS induction heater. This is going to be part two of examining how much power is transferred when we have a work piece that is larger than the work coil. Turning on the power, we have a 48 volt power supply and uh, let's round that up to 50 just for easy math. So at 20 amperes, 50 volts, that's about a thousand total watts. The idle current right now is about 5 amperes, so that's already taking up about 5 times 50 or 250 watts. So we've got about 750 watts left to actually apply power to the work, right? Okay, so again, 5 amps of idle current. We're going to try four different pieces of metal that are larger than the work coil. The first one is a heavy wall three inch tube. Uh, note that I have removed the uh, shelf that's normally underneath here so that we can put the work up under the coil so we can encircle the coil as best as possible. The intake tube for the coil uh, uh, goes down the back side here so we won't be able to get this three inch piece quite all the way under there but pretty darn close. Okay, three inch piece going into the work coil. I, I hope you can read the amp meter but if not I will be telling you what I get. So now the first thing I'm going to do is to put this piece of material kind of even with the bottom of the work coil and then we'll go up from there. So, even with the bottom, I have uh, 12 amps, that's gross, so we have to subtract the 5 amps idle current to calculate the power. So, 5 amps, push it up there as far as I can, 20 amps, that's as much as I can get in there, 20, 21 amperes with the 3 inch. Now we have a 4 inch thin walled steel tube. Even with the bottom coming up, 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 uh, 18 amperes. That's gross again. Next we have a 6 inch diameter steel ring. even with the bottom about one amp here. Now I'm moving it up so it's centered on the work coil and we have seven amps. Five amps, six, seven amps. If I move the part so that it's touching the edge of the work coil which is insulated of course I get eight amps so that's of course like just using a plain steel bar if I do it this way, I only get about maybe one amp of gain, by the way. So again, with the six inch steel bar, the best I can do is a gross of maybe seven amps for a gain of two times 50 volts equals about 100 watts transfer. Lastly, I have an eight and a half inch diameter piece of pipe and I bring that up underneath barely see the amp meter move at all maybe a quarter of an amp no matter what I do I just don't get anything more than maybe a quarter or a half an amp that far away from the work coil okay and back to about five amperes so that really is the end of the test for today. I hope you can see from this test and the previous one that the really the best way to work things is to have the uh, work fit inside the work coil, which means you may have to make a bigger work coil so that you can get the work inside there. I won't say that it's never right to have the 
workpiece bigger than the work coil, but I hope you can see from these experiments that it's very, very ineffective as we get very far away from the, uh, from the work coil itself. And that concludes today's test.